Hey guys, Jesse here, and welcome back to my Star Wars Rebels reaction series. Today we're going to be moving on to Season 2, Episode 14. So last episode we had Mandalorians, and Mandalorians doing what Mandalorians do, which is extreme violence. So the Rebellion needed a new hyperspace lane, and Sabine suggested a hyperspace lane that currently was occupied by Mandalorians, but not Mandalorians that are currently connected to Mandalore the planet, but their own separate subset because Mandalorians love subgroups of Mandalorians. When Hera and Sabine went to parlay with the Mandalorians, the Mandalorians shot Hera out of the sky because they're Mandalorians and trigger happy, so of course they did. Sabine went on a very quick revenge kick and when Kanan went to parlay with the Mandalorians, she kind of tagged along as a stowaway and while he was trying to convince the leader of the Mandalorians to join the rebellion. She got caught trying to plant a bunch of explosives on their ships, challenged the leader to a trial by combat basically, but before they could actually fight she ended up blowing up all the ships. The leader was captured and then forced to work with the rebellion and Sabine had a little speech about violence not always being the answer. That's a very Jedi thing, not a Mandalorian thing. But Sabine again isn't the most Mandalorian of all the Mandalorians. I mean she does like blowing stuff up, which is a very Mandalore trait. But besides from that she does show mercy much more often than most members of, let's say, Death Watch would. And speaking of Death Watch, we learned that Sabine's family is connected to Death Watch through Sabine's mother because she was a former member of Death Watch and her whole family is connected to the Vizsla clan. How much she is actually connected to pre-Vizsla is not really explained. I'm guessing if there is a relation there it's very distant because they look very much not alike. So yeah it was a very Sabine centric episode that means that we got little hints and pieces of her past. She's not one for sharing or touchy-feely conversation, so everything we learn about her is in very small snippets. But with that last episode done, let's go ahead and continue on to Season 2, Episode 14. You said these people are wanted by the Empire. Do you know why? No, but I hear they're closing in. We better hurry. So where'd you hear about these refugees anyway? Huh? Oh, you know, one of our uh, contacts. Speaking of, mm -hmm. Chopper, you better let him know we're here. Mm -hmm. That seems suspicious. Hey, where'd you get that transmitter? Oh, 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 oh. There's no answer. We better hurry. Oh no, we're too late. Mm. Drag those refugees out of there. <gasps> Wait. That looks like. Lasats? My people. The Lasats. No. Where are you taking us? Well, there's more survivors! For a nice long stay. <laughs> more likely a blaster squad. More people survived. Oh, that's his contact. Ah, oh, but I sold the Lasats to the Empire knowing the heroes would save the day. <laughs> you being the heroes, of course. It is him, Captain Aurelius. By the Ashla. The prophecy. Captain. The prophecy? Captain Gerizeb Aurelius of the Lasan High Honor Guard. Gron, I served under you in the Guard. This is Chapel, the Wise. Oh, yeah, I know who she is. <laughs> I didn't know you were a captain. He never told any of us. Oh, wait, wait. Does this mean I am not getting my fine as me? You never were. <laughs> Perfect answer. I am so proud of you right now. I never had a student like this quickly. Hold it. Uh, something wrong, my friend? Distress call from an officer. He was meeting an informant here. Really? Oh. Well, you know, I just arrived. But Time for me to leave. <laughs> Imperial fugitives? Uh, rebels, I mean. Good question. Oh, I understand, though, that there is a reward for that kind of uh, information. So, tell us where you're 
<laughs> Ando never changes. There, that's the end. Agent Callus, the informant came through. Oh yeah, Callus is here. That makes sense though, if it's about Lasat. Well, thanks for the warning. More trouble than he's worth. Imperial cruiser, I see him. Hi, Callus. Bye, Callus. We have a way to find them. Well, good news. I will help. <laughs> Always eager to assist the Empire. <laughs> okay. <sighs> we do not yet have the location of. We have maps if you need them. There is no Lyra Sun, Hera. It's a myth. Part of me thinks she's a crazy old kook, but also the Force is a thing here. So, prophecies kind of are just a thing in this universe. I'm not weird. <laughs> Quiet, Chopper. The Ashla led us to the pirate, then to you, so that we may find our path to the new world. The Ashla. The spirit of the galaxy. Sounds like the Force. The Force has many names, Ezra. The promise of Lyrasan will follow the fate of the three. The fool, simple and selfish. He would lead the warrior, bold and bloodthirsty, to hunt the hope of tomorrow. The child, to destroy him. We will find our new home only if the child the warrior, and the fool. Hey, he is the child. I assume you have a tracking device. Uh, oh, well, I was just getting to that. You see, you are good. This is why I could not do business with the Empire. What is your name? <laughs> oh, Callus is not gonna take any of Hondo's shit. The fool has set events into motion. The only fools I know are us for listening to this gunk. So the fool, Hondo. Did that serve us on the sun? I don't know who the warrior is. Maybe Zeb is the child, though. Please join. Maybe it's like a metaphorical child. Every single Lassat, their safety was my duty. I failed my people that day. So don't fail them now. We are ready for your map. Julia-san will be revealed through the fates of the three. And the fool, so the child must show us the way. That's it. That's it. Your son. Hmm. How far is it to Lear son? Well, judging by this. 
Hi, Callus. I'm guessing this is you. Because <laughs> you're always such a pain in the ass. Shit. That's actually really beautiful. This is the maze that was prophesized. Wait, a maze? You never said anything about a maze. You prophecy types always pull something like this. Uh, now what? There's Callus. How did he find us? Hello, my friends. Hondo? What are you doing with him? I must apologize, Ezra. I hid a tracker on that transmitter. You know, for insurance purposes. Can't believe this. Callus has got us. He plays his part as warrior. Wait, he is the warrior? And I got stuck being the child? There are many warriors, fools and children, Captain. The child in you can't see how things are, but how they can be. The fool denies his destiny. But it is the warrior you are who will create one. You are never one of these. In time, you become all of them. But wait, I thought he was supposed to save the warrior. Your time is up, Rebels. Deb, what are you doing? Leading the way. God, why is this episode so pretty? Like, everything looks like a oil painting. And the violin music feels so different. Let them go. What? To their destruction. Let them go. Pull back, full retreat. Mm. You'll get them next time. No. I will watch them be destroyed. Hey, buddy, you heard? Oh, I've had worse. I've never seen better. We're home. Where are some? Well, kind of sad. Those two Lasat all alone on that planet? They're not alone. What are you talking about? There are already Lasat down there. Lyra's son is where my people originally came from. Mm -hmm. Yes, Chopper, that means there's a lot more of him. <laughs> yes, we can go home now. Yeah, how do we get home? Consider this system charted, which means now that the ghost has been here, we can always come back. And if we meet any other Lasat, I will show them the way. So that was my reaction to Season 2, Episode 14 of Star Wars Rebels, Legends of the Lasat. I'm incredibly happy that we got a Zeb-focused episode. I think his backstory is one of the more interesting ones to me because it's something that we really haven't seen before. Like, we don't have any pre-existing Lasat characters. We know nothing about their people, nothing about their planet. And so Zeb is kind of the mouthpiece of this entire section of new Star Wars lore. And I shouldn't be that surprised that we met more Lasats because whenever there's a character that thinks that they're the last of their kind, 99% of the time there's more of them out there. So yeah, we got two new... Lasat characters. One of them's that stereotypical old mystic lady that everyone kind of thinks is crazy but might actually be right. And then the other one apparently has given up on any violent action even though apparently Lasats are a warrior race. I'm interested in the prophecy though. 
prophecies in Star Wars have a tendency to actually happen. Not necessarily in the ways that people think they will, but they do happen. So the prophecy is that the child will save the fool and the warrior and find a new home planet of Lasat. So we've kind of reversed the order of that prophecy. Zeb has found a new planet for the Lasat people. But I don't think the child has rescued the fool and the warrior yet. So does that mean that the prophecy is now in motion because Zeb found a home for the Lasat people so now he has to rescue the warrior and the fool. Because if he is the child in this situation, he is a child of Lasat. And then in this situation, Callus is the warrior. And obviously the fool is probably Hondo. Just in this given episode. Selfish to a fault, gets himself into trouble. Hondo kind of fits the fool. And then Callus being the warrior and his bloodthirstiness also fits. But I'm just wondering if this prophecy is true and let's assume that Chava is correct and Zeb is in fact the child and then Callus is the warrior. What is Zeb going to rescue Callus from? Because he apparently has to do that now because he set this prophecy in motion and he's found the home for or the Lasat. So the other half of the prophecy apparently has to come true now. Does Zeb save Callus to kind of try to put away the past and move on from the destruction of Lasan, rescues Callus from like an outside force, or is rescuing Callus or rescuing the warrior more of a metaphorical rescue? And if so, maybe Zeb rescues Callus from himself? I don't know. Star Wars has a tendency to cycle through certain themes. It deals with family a lot, and it deals with redemption a lot. Is this setting up maybe Callus learning the error of his ways and getting his own little redemption? And that's how Zeb is going to save Callus by saving him from his more darker tendencies and metaphorically bringing him into the light? Because this is not the first time that Callus has stopped himself from attacking the rebel group, or pulled back in any sort of way. I mean, he has a really good excuse of that they're dive bombing into a nebula, but I wonder if his reasoning is as black and white as Callus wants everyone to believe it is. That he's letting them go because they're gonna die anyway. But also, from Callus's point of view, that never happens. No matter what the odds are, or how drastic things get, the Ghost Crew survives everything. So him letting them go either is an act of stupidity, an act of cowardice, or an act of mercy. And I don't think Callus is stupid or a coward. I don't know. I'm not expecting a Callus redemption, but I wouldn't be entirely surprised if they went that route. I'm just wondering where this prophecy ends up going. Also, I love the fact that Zeb ends up sticking with the ghost crew, even though he clearly has a planet now of all his people. He has a planet of Lasats, two of which are from his original planet, but he still decides to stick with the ghost crew, and I think that just shows how much he considers them his family. Even if they're not from the same planet and they're not the same species, he's loyal to them and maybe that just shows that that the ghost and its crew are his home. I just, I really enjoy Zeb in this episode. And I think that really has to do with Steve Blum's, or Steve Blum's, I don't know how to pronounce it, but his performance is phenomenal in this. It's incredibly subtle, I feel like. It's not really over the top, but you can still feel his grief really well through his vocal performance, especially when he's talking with Ezra. And I just think he's generally a very good voice actor. I mean, I feel like anyone who's ever watched Cowboy Bebop can tell you that, but I really enjoyed his acting in this episode. Also, this episode in general was just really pretty, especially when it gets to 
that final act. I think this show's art style really shines in its environments and its atmosphere scenes because it has that very painterly style. So whenever you get space or like lower atmosphere, so like clouds, it's always so beautiful looking. And, and I love it in this particular episode. And that paired with that cello music, which feels very different than any music we've gotten before, adds to a very atmospheric feeling scene. It's not big or bombastic or showy, it's just very subtle and very beautiful and really helps set the mood. And yeah, I really love that cello slash violin piece. It feels very different than any of the John Williams big orchestral scores in the actual movies and very different than the electronic heavy sounds that were in the Clone Wars. But I'm very happy that we got an episode focused on Zeb and his past. And I'm interested to see how much this episode foreshadows Zeb's future character arcs. So that was my reaction to Season 2, Episode 14 of Star Wars Rebels, Legends of the Lasat. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this reaction, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and keeps me motivated to keep making more of these. So thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Bye.